Welcome everybody to this second session we have uh, for our rural communities here in Central Ohio. We're really excited about this panel on cultivating our your, your leaders. This is something that we know all of us as community leaders, as public officials, as public servants, this is so important to us, making sure we're serving the community, making sure we're helping the region and being able to uh, focus in on that with some really uh, great experts and such a talented panel, uh, panel is so important to us. I think that as our as we are regional planners at Morpsey, we're really aware of just how diverse Central Ohio has become too. And with this diversity, there's so much opportunity to become that place where the voices of everybody in our community can be encouraged, heard, valued, and understood in our communities. And this applies to the whole region. And so these critical leadership positions in your communities, we want to make sure all voices are at those tables so that we can be even better. So again, looking forward to today's panel. And thank you, Eileen, Morpsey's Membership Services Officer, for putting it together. And I'm going to turn it over to her to moderate the forum. All right. Thank you, William. Perfect. OK, so we have four wonderfully talented speakers today to, to bring a conversation about cultivating your next leader. So I'm happy I will be moderating. I encourage you to put some questions into the chat and if we get time, we'll go ahead and address those. We are recording this meeting so you can watch it later. So let's begin. I'm going to now have the four interns turn on their cameras and introduce these wonderful speakers. And the first one to be introduced will be Debbie Phillips. Good morning, I'm Fatima Aldrani, a senior at The Ohio State University. I am completing my degree in public management, leadership and policy and a minor in political science and pre-law. I am honored to introduce Debbie Phillips, the CEO of Rural Action, known for building economies in rural areas. Debbie Phillips helped grow the organization having served as development director and in 2018 was named a CEO. She served as the area's representative to the Ohio House for eight years immediately prior to returning to Rural Action. As a House member, she served on the House Finance Committee, House Education Committee, House Agricultural and Rural Development Committee, the Joint Legislative Ethics Commission, and the Joint Committee on Agency Rule Review. She has served as a member of Athens City Council, was the founding executive director of the Ohio Fair Schools Campaign, which was hosted through Rural Action and worked to promote quality public education. Debbie is a graduate of Ohio University and lives near Albany with her husband and children. Please welcome Ms. Debbie Phillips. Great to be here with you today. Thank you. Next introduction will be Chris Schmidt. Good morning. I'm Caroline Stoller, a junior at The Ohio State University, and I'm completing my degree in public management, leadership and policy, and strategic communication. I am honored to introduce the Honorable Chris Schmidt, Union County Commissioner. Chris has served as an economic development attorney at Berker and Eckler, where she represented the Ohio Economic Development Association the Northwest Ohio Regional Economic Development Association and various local jurisdictions. From 2011 to 2013, she served as the director of the Ohio Development Services Agency, a member of Governor Kasich's cabinet, where she helped start Jobs Ohio and then reorganize the Ohio Development Services Agency. Chris's past roles include vice president of the Scott's Miracle Grow Company and mayor of Marysville in a wide host of leadership roles in numerous civic organizations. She and her husband raised two adult children and most recently became new grandparents. Please welcome Ms. Schmink. I think Chris is uh, making her comments there. Chris, I think, oh, there you go. You were There I go, sorry. <laughs> Technical difficulty, <laughs> Caroline, thank you so much for that wonderful introduction and it's great to be with you all today. Wonderful, looking forward to it. And our next introduction will be Bryn Bird. Good morning, I'm Marley Stoller, a master's student at The Ohio State University. I'm completing my degree in agricultural communication, education and leadership with a specialization in communication and will graduate in 2022. I am honored to introduce the Honorable Bryn Bird Granville Township Trustee. Bren earned a Master's of Public Health from George Washington University and a Bachelor's in Zoology from Miami University. She is the co-operator at Bird's Haven Farm and a loyal vendor at the Grandview Farmers Market since 1985. 
She is a strong advocate for farmers and serves as a policy consultant at a rural coalition in Washington, D.C. in several leadership roles, such as the Canal Market District and Enterprise Hub, Newark, Ohio, Explore Licking County, Ohio Ecological Food and Farm Association, and the Ohio Farmers Union. Bryn is one of three women profiled in a documentary regarding women in politics titled Represent, produced by filmmaker Hilary Bachelder. Bryn and husband Brian Walsh are proud parents of three girls. Please welcome Miss Bryn Bird. Thank you so much for a great introduction and excited to be here for this conversation today. All right, wonderful. And, and now we'd like to also introduce Shanette Strickland. Good morning. I am Leah Pierre Louis, a junior at The Ohio State University. I'm earning a degree in political science and a minor in Chinese language and culture. I am honored to introduce the Honorable Shanette Mobley Strickland, City Councilman for Ward 1 at the City of Reynoldsburg. Shanette earned a bachelor's degree in technical management from DeVry University and a master of business administration from Franklin University. She's the first in her family to graduate from college. Shanette has served in leadership roles in community service organizations that include Reynoldsburg Football Parent Association, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority, Charms and Curve Incorporated, and National Association of Negro Business and Provincial Women's Club. With her election in 2019, Shanette became one of three African-American women elected to city council for the first time in Reynoldsburg history. Shanette lives in Reynoldsburg with her college sweetheart and husband of 20 years, Chris Strickland, and her inspiring sons, Chris II and Sean. Please welcome Ms. Strickland. I am so glad to be here this morning. Thank you, Leah, for the introduction. I'm looking forward to the conversation. All right. I love how you introduced your family. Cute, cute adjectives. All right. We're going to let the interns turn their cameras off. We'll let the speakers turn their cam keep their cameras on. And the audience, if you can remember, keep your cameras off. But you can use the chat function if you have any questions. And Rolanda is going to help me manage that function. I'm going to start with our very first question about what sparked your interest to get the position you're in now. And uh, I think, Chris, can I start with you? Can you hear me? Sorry, yes. I'm going to not not mute from now on. <laughs> yes. Oh, it may it muted you for some reason. Now, now you're good. OK, good. Sorry about that. I'm going to leave it unmuted. I'm not going to touch it. <laughs> you um, thank you for uh, asking that question, Eileen. You know, for me, I'm one of those people that um, when I see things happening that I think are either good or bad, I want to be part of that. And so in my current role as Union County Commissioner, I saw a lot of growth happening in my county. Um, for me, I think it's overall a positive thing, but I wanted to be part of that growth. I wanted to be part of the change and to try to work with others to help it be a positive change. And so, so for me, it was to jump in and get involved as the conditions around me were changing. Okay, excellent. Shanette, how about yourself? You you started off active in the community and next thing you know, city council. <laughs> oh, you muted. Somehow we're muted. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for some reason. Um, yes, um, thank you everyone. Um, yeah, I started my journey actually helping someone else get elected here in Reynoldsburg. Never in a million years did I think I would be in politics, right? I come from a technical background, um, but when I started attending city council, you know, I, I didn't see anyone that looked like me and represented, you know, our community was changing and was representing another part of Reynoldsburg. And so I got involved. Um, I believe Christine said, you can't complain about something. You have to really, you know, get involved if you want to see that change and be that change agent because these little girls, little boys are looking up to you. And so that's one of the reasons why I got involved because I wanted to make sure that Reynoldsburg be is, is best for everyone. Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right. And I'll move over to Bryn. Bryn, yourself. Your story's <laughs> wonderful story. Yeah, um, I decided to run for township trustee uh, because I grew up with my grandfather being um, the township trustee in Galena, Ohio, um, and it was his funeral when um, there were just hundreds of people who showed up and they were all talking about the way that, you know, my grandfather was able to really be involved in their life, whether it was, you know, the time that the trash was spilled in the middle of the road and, 
he was able to pick it up to, you know, bigger issues of helping people um, be able to locate where their business could be and start their family business. And it really um, was important to me and, and amazing to see as a little girl, I was only maybe 10 years old, um, to see how he was able to impact people's lives on a day-to-day -day basis um, and be so involved in his community and really giving back. So um, at the time, I had just finished up at the Canal Market District and had been really, really involved in the community and loving every second. Um, and I wanted to just continue um, in a leadership position that allowed for me to kind of work across all aspects of my community. So that's excellent. That Very means. good. And Debbie, you went in and out of politics and then yeah. take, took a big role as uh, running a major uh, nonprofit. But tell us about yeah. your, your story. Well, I'll, you know, I'll speak to being in the nonprofit now, but then go a little earlier to some of the, the early spark towards service. Um, I really love the work that I'm doing now because I get to work with people on a very grassroots level, implementing projects that are um, really rooted in the local community um, and kind of transcend some of the political divisions that can exist. So that's been just really, really good for me to get back to working more at a community level as far as the time that I served in public office, if I think back to what sparked that, um, I think part of it was Wenda Sheard asking me to serve on the League of Women Voters Board for Athens County. I had been volunteering in local organizations, and she was um, an attorney in our community, saw that I had been showing up and doing stuff. I couldn't even afford the dues to join the League of Women Voters of Ohio at the time. And another board member paid my dues. I was a, a just a really young single mom at the time. So, you know, I think people looking around for folks who are involved and are willing to do something to get back to the community can give that little boost to help folks take another uh, step into leadership. So I think if you wanted a, like a spark moment, that would be one. <laughs> That, that's really a, that's a good point. That kind of makes me segue over to Bryn because I watched her campaign in the movie Represent. It really was amazing. Bryn, let's talk about who helped you in that campaign that allowed you, that gave you the chance and energy and resources to run. Yeah, um, I do believe um, in my community, um, there's a woman, Grace Charrington, and she was um, a woman who has been involved in Ohio politics and and mentoring women um, throughout Central Ohio for years. And she was the one who first, you know, really pushed me uh, to run. And one of the things she did is she would just put um, calendar invites and coffee dates like on my calendar um, that like every week she just kept putting them on my calendar. Um, and I'm somebody who can't just say no. And so I kept going to coffee with her until she finally really walked me through the steps of, you know, this is what you need to consider if you're really considering a run. Um, and after that, you know, it really ended up being my friends in my community um, who helped make a logo before I could ask for them to make a logo and held that first party. And I did kind of create, you know, like a little kitchen table cabinet who really um, inspired me and helped me. But one of the things that I've said too is I, I have three young children um, and, you know, I had many friends who, you know, had never been involved in campaigns or political, um, you know, things before. And they weren't, you know, they didn't have the money or the resources. They didn't want to go canvassing, um, but they set up a calendar uh, sign up for babysitting my little girls. And that honestly was the thing that gave a lot of like empowerment to me was seeing my community saying, we we see where your struggle is, that you have your little girls and we want to be there to, to help you. Um, and knowing that somebody was watching my kids made me feel guilty enough that I needed to like work. Um, just, like, calling people and canvassing is sometimes like daunting, um, but knowing that like, okay, somebody's also giving up their day to watch my kids, I should probably get it done. So that was a huge one for me was, um, yeah, friends just kind of seeing you running and, you know, if you know another person who's considering it, ways that you can step in that might not be like a financial contribution. It might be like that coffee date of just asking mm -hmm. them to sit there and like, what can I do for you? Can I help you with your website? Can I help you, um, you know, find somebody to watch your kids. But some, I mean, those little things um, are the big empowerment, I think, to get in the race. Go ahead, Debbie. Do you have a thought? There was a woman who um, made a meal for my family one day a week when I first ran for the Ohio House. And she was like, I can't afford to put a lot of time in. I can't afford to contribute financially, but I will like one day a week, make sure your family gets like a really good meal. So. Wow, that's so wonderful. Jeanette, have you thinking of, uh, Jeanette, you just, you were in active in your school. You got a busy family doing all kinds of stuff. 
what kept you going? What kept you? What, what got you to go for city council? That's a big job. Yes. Um, I'm telling you, it was my family and friends that really kept me going. My husband will be out there knocking on doors when I had to be at another event or putting up my yard signs. Uh, my my um, my sons, you know, they played football. So I was, again, part of the Reynoldsburg Football Parent Association. So uh, one day we had probably about 10 football players coming out and knocking on doors. You know, they participated in the 4th of July parade for me. Um, you know, it was, I knew this was something that I could not do on my own, um, that I need to really have some people around me that really believed in me winning this particular race. Kristen Bryant was, um, she is amazing. She really started this movement in Reynoldsburg and we were able to grow on that. And uh, I'm so glad that, you know, we were able to get, you know, two other African-American women elected here in the first time um, here in Reynoldsburg. So we're just gonna continue and make sure that people know that we are here. Excellent. Very good. Chris, you have a thought there? You come, come full circle, all all kinds yeah, of work. So, so maybe picking up on something that Debbie said, when I first uh, moved back to Union County and I started working here, people reached out to me who were leaders and asked me to join groups and join boards. And, you know, that's something I think um, sometimes as a woman or, you know, anyone who maybe doesn't um, see as much in themselves as others might, it is so empowering to have somebody reach out to you. And so that allowed me to get involved in the community. And, you know, I would encourage others, if you're looking for ways to raise up leaders in your community, you know, you, you shouldn't just sit back. And, and go to the typical people that are already involved. Look for that next generation. Reach mm -hmm. out to them as somebody did to Debbie and as somebody did to me, because that builds your, you know, succession plan, your bench depth mm -hmm. for, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm now in my 60s. Sooner or later with my new grandson, I'll probably want to step out of some of these roles, but I want to feel comfortable that there's others there ready to to take over. And so um, I just thought that was an important thing that Debbie said. Absolutely. So let's talk about some opportunities in the communities right now where they can test their leadership skills, start gaining mm -hmm. that experience because it, 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 all of you took big risks. You, you had a lot of guts. Let's talk about someone who's a little more timid. They've got the skills, but they've never been in a big role like that. They've never been a public role. They haven't been knocked down. They haven't been criticized. Can we talk about where do we have those entry level possibilities where people can gain some good experience? Mm -hmm. um, you know, one thing that I did um, where um, I tried to encourage folks to get involved with the Fair Schools campaign, we brought high school students to the state house to testify on budgets. Um, and it was a big thing for them to contemplate, but, you know, I believe this very, very deeply and would share with them that legislators have to know a little bit about a lot of different things, and they don't necessarily know how the policies play out in day-to-day -day life, and that these kids are the experts in how the system is affecting them and what opportunities they have. And so a lot of support to them to speak from their own experience and not feel like they had to know everything, that it was fine to say, you know, I'll find out and get back to you if they didn't have the answer to a specific question. But to like, I think people are willing to show up and do stuff if they know, like if they're asked to do a specific thing and they understand why it matters that they're there, right? And just like a little bit of support to get into that space. So asking people to do one specific thing can be a really big springboard for them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, any, yeah. any other thoughts on that? Of, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. yeah, for me, um, one day I end up doing a voter registration at the high school. And I started talking to some of the seniors who were 18 who really wanted to get involved with politics. Um, it didn't matter if they were, you know, Republican or Democrat, they just wanted to get involved. And as Debbie stated before, you have to be able to give someone specific specific tasks so they'll be able to know what their worth are, you know. 
actually observing them, what they're good at, you know, some, you know, things that they want to improve in, given the, the opportunity to do so. Um, one other um, group that I'm really involved with is the Central Ohio Young Black Dems. Um, they are really involved and they want to be able to eventually maybe run for office. Getting them involved early on your campaigns, um, you know, if there needs to be a phone bank, having them, you know, maybe um, get that together. But yeah, there's so many different opportunities. We just have to make sure that we are asking the right people, getting them involved, um, and so having a succession plan, as Christine said. Mm -hmm. And Eileen, if I could just add, um, you know, I think it's so important for us to kind of demystify what we do and how we got here. So programs like this are so important, but you know, I think it was Bryn who talked about, uh, you know, person who mentored her and told her, here's what you need to do. And, you know, I try to do that as a Union County Commissioner to um, make our board sessions welcoming and friendly. And if people attend, ask for their input on things. And, you know, I think it's just really important for us to let the public know we want their help, we want their involvement, we want them to, you know, maybe run for our roles in the future. Um, I, I do think to get more people involved, we, we have to just be a friendly, welcoming place. And I think too, you know, I have this conversation a lot and, you know, there's questions all the time about, yes, I'm, you know, a township trustee and people are often in their first race, you know, running for like congressional seats and you know other things and i have said so many times you know i worked in policy in at the federal level and then to be able to go and work at the most local government um has been so helpful for me to understand governance in in, in action you know we're sitting here advocating and saying we need USDA to have bigger grants so we can do broadband well then getting and working in my local office at the local local level and seeing okay how do you fill out those applications how am i you know working through to get this money that i've advocated for into the local community has been really helpful and i do think there's a lot of local positions that we um, tend to really overlook i've had people come to me and talk about running you know for councils um, and city councils and village councils um, who really haven't attended those meetings even. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I share all the time is we have so many committee appointments. I don't know, I'm sure that you know, you guys too, we're always filling committee appointments to our Chamber of Commerce, to our REC, to you know our zoning, to our zoning commissions. And um, I, a lot of times I feel like we are just picking from the same pocket of people um, because we don't know who's out there. We're not really even sure like, gosh, I don't wanna burden that person with another committee. But, you know, is there somebody out there who's interested in one day getting involved in council where being a part of this zoning um, board might really, really help them understand um, what it means to, to be a trustee? And so I sometimes pick my friends' brains like, oh, what are you interested in? And what do you think about this? And just recently I had the opportunity to appoint, appoint two people to, a land, to our land trust and, you know, was able to find somebody who has never been involved in any local politics, any local committees, um, put her on this committee and she is like taken off with it and is helping us with the levy campaign and coming up with innovative ideas. And she has said, you know, like I didn't even know that these committees existed. Um, and it's a great way too to get involved and meet people in your community across political spectrums. Committees are not, you know, there's no politics in committees. They are, you know, this great nonpartisan opportunity to meet people. And so I've said too many times, if people are truly interested in getting involved, making sure that the elected people, if it's your school board or your council or anywhere, your county saying, you know, next time you have a committee appointment open, I would love to be <clears throat> considered. Um, because mm -hmm. that's just such a huge way to get involved. I also put somebody on our um, village charter committee and he ended up getting the chairmanship and he had to like answer questions last week for two hours. And so he also told me <laughs> I may have overstepped, but he asked. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, I, I want to take a talk on that, if I may. Um, we had this same discussion um, within a group we have here locally. We have a monthly lunch for nonprofit execs. Um, in our county, and we talked about board recruitment and the fact that people are always sitting in the room brainstorming the people they know, like, oh, who would be good? And so a lot of people get asked to do all the things. So we actually discussed best practices for board recruitment, and I think this could be true for all the boards and commissions in local government. 
we posted a position on our job posting site, you know, like, are you interested in joining our board? And put a little application form for people to tell us a little bit about themselves. And I've got four applicants who had never popped up in discussion who are like great people, you know, and so whether it's nonprofits or the tree commission or, you know, whatever you're looking for folks, if we just open it up a little bit, you know, maybe there are people who want to get involved but didn't really know how. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, sure. I, I know we probably have to get um, past this um, question, but one one other thing that I end up doing um, when I was knocking on doors and people was like, hey, how can I get involved? Because um, they were excited to see someone that looked like me um, when I was out there knocking on doors. And last year I end up working with the mayor. We introduced seven different commissions. I went back to those doors. Hey, this is a way that you can get involved. You know, we have the planning commission. We have make uh, the beautification commission. Uh, there are so many things that we have going on here in Reynoldsburg, but I went back to those individuals and asked them, please get involved because it's going to take all of us, right, mm -hmm. to see the, make the difference that we want to see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, absolutely. So let's talk about you don't know everything. You don't know transportation, sustainability, water, sewer, everything when you were going for those positions. What 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 gave you the guts to go forward? You don't need to know everything. Let's talk about that. You don't need to know everything when you're going to take a leadership role. You're going in there with skill sets. So how do we uh, encourage people that have the abilities, but they're like, oh, I don't know everything about roads. I don't think I know everything about how to get signage, etc. How do we get past that conversation with them and, st and say you do have the capabilities of getting into the position um i would start that com um, conversation so um currently i am the chair of the public service and transportation and again i didn't know anything right um being a leader one of the things you have to do is be a good listener right be humble get the information ask questions and i went up to the street department i sat with those guys I, I, you know the transportation i wanted to understand the things that they saw out here how can i be able to help them you know um, when they're asking for we need this particular street fix going after those funds um, but one of the things again i didn't have all the the answers Right? I didn't even have all the questions really to ask, especially for someone who's coming from outside of politics. But I mm -hmm. listen and I just try mm -hmm. to get that information and ask questions. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And I think in encouraging new people to get involved, like making sure they understand that everybody in office are, are people. You know, I think that our culture has such um, uh, a disconnect sometimes and think of policymakers as being some special class that's like off somewhere separate in the world. But, you know, we all have experiences and perspectives that we bring to the conversation that are important to be represented in the room. And, you know, just helping people see that these are very human processes and the folks that are in there are also human and we all have things to learn and we all have things to contribute. It's just it, it's a, a little bit of a step to get people to see themselves in that role. But um, if they just show up at some committee meetings or council meetings, they'll see that it's just folks, you know, and, and they belong there as much as anybody else. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any other comment on that? I'll just kind of re repeat something I think several of us have said. It is so um, empowering if somebody reaches out to you and mm -hmm. says, this is something I think you could do. Have you thought about it? And, you know, so I would encourage uh, all of our listeners today to, you know, if you're looking for future leaders to to speak those words of empowerment into others. I just did something similar to, I think Bryn was talking about reaching out to somebody out of the blue for one of our open positions. And, you know, now she's going for it and I'm very excited. Um, and, you know, I think if, if we want to see um, different people in roles, then we can help that happen. Um, I'll give a more seat plug really quick. I think, too, there's all these like different groups. So you're saying, you know, too, like you get involved and I didn't know much about economic development um, or pedestrian pathways, but all the groups that do. 
um, are really excited to do educate uh, local elected people. Um, and so I remember, you know, when I first started going to um, uh, the Central Ohio, like the Economic Development 101 um, that the that everybody puts on and learning so much and became very close with Nate Strom, our Economic Development Director. And like he, you know, always is there to answer questions. Morpsey puts on wonderful, um, you know, educational things. Like I went to the one about pedestrian pathways right when I was elected and learned so much. And so I've since kind of realized there's groups out there that are passionate about it that want to teach you. Um, so you might not know anything, but man, there's a training for everything. Great so. point. Absolutely. So let's talk about that leader that's humble. We need humble characteristics. We want to talk about change in uh, Central Ohio and Ohio, where we want good, authentic people going for office that have integrity, that have uh, the qualities that make a good leader. Let's talk about that because humble is one of them. And you would think, wow, how can I be a out there kind of person? But I'm humble. What does that mean when we see when we want those kind of leaders? You know, I think it means being willing to put ourselves out there to um, to show that I I don't know everything, you know, but I will listen as Shanette said, I will participate as Bryn said in educational sessions. I'll ask for help. Um, you know, to me, the goal is showing that you're willing to work together to collaborate. I think um, our region has a good reputation as being a region of collaborators and you know i think together we're so much stronger i, I feel like that's kind of cliche but it's true you know my county union county cannot go it alone we're so connected to other counties in the region and we're going to be so much stronger if we're working together so to me humbleness is being willing to kind of be vulnerable myself and i think that empowers others to know you know we we can all do this if we do it together mm -hmm, mm -hmm. any other thoughts there why, why is it important that we um talk with the people that really are opposing uh, an idea why do we why do we have to have the the opposite opinion in the room i think you it's know, like debbie said too it's making it's reminding everybody we're human. You know, when I ran for office, I got coffee with every person I ran against. Um, and like we sat down because to me, you see me, I'm going to talk to you about my little kids. I'm going to talk to you about my, you know, dad and the farm and everything. And then when you attack me as a person, it's a little bit more like I'm a person. Um, and so I did sit down and have coffee with every person I ran against. Just yesterday, I went to lunch with three of the um, guys in my community who are on the very opposing political spectrum, but we went to lunch, we drove to lunch together, and, you know, I could see some people walking by a little surprised, but again, it's that I, I'm elected to do a position for everybody, and, and we are all people, and I do want to hear, like, what is the, you know, the thing, and afterwards, one of them called me last night and just said how impressed they were that, you know, I continue just to always listen, doesn't mean we're always going to agree on anything, um, but, it's good for us to talk, but I do think um, I do think it is really what Debbie said. I think we've lost that ability. Um, I told some people last night I went to lunch with this group and you could see their faces. They just were like, well, why would you do that? That just is ridiculous that you still would sit down with them. And I don't know why we've gotten to this place that it's ridiculous to think you shouldn't sit down with anybody. Um, and so I'm, I'm always willing to do that. Yeah, and I think nothing is as simple as the sound bites and the social media silos, right? I mean, people have lived experience and information that can help us make better decisions and better policy if we listen to those perspectives. You know, if we can just get past the kind of shouting <laughs> that that is so common these days, um, we can learn things that will help us do a better job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, just recently I had introduced the source of income legislation and there were some people who opposed that, um, but I believe just having the conversation and being open to listen because I represent everyone, not just Ward 1 um, neighbors, but everyone that's in Reynoldsburg. And so just to hear them say thank you, Councilwoman, for listening to me, right? Um, it gives a, another perspective to them saying, hey, you know, she's open to at least having a conversation. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Absolutely. All right. Let's talk a little bit more about that good listening. Uh, where, where, who are the influencers in your community? They're, they're out there. Who are those influencers that can really, you need to know their opinions. You, you know they have a lot of followers or uh, they could be very helpful if you need to sit down and have a conversation because you, you're either trying to get someone to go for an office, you're trying to get the community to understand why we need to go in some direction. Um, you know, we, we I think we're doubly challenged right now because we've lost the ability to communicate some of the means now or people are very, very filtered on what kind of communication they're watching. So um, where would we go in that? We want to have those good conversations with the influencers that could help us. You know, um, before I ran for the house, I was advised to make a list of 100 opinion leaders in my district and to think widely about who those folks are. So ministerial association leaders, Rotary clubs, the bank president, the, you know, current electeds, uh, school superintendents, um, just folks who are involved with different nonprofits in the area and just in the like a full year before the election to sit down and say I'm getting more involved in the community I really want to understand um, the things that you see and the people you're hearing from and not ask for anything but to just like sit and have those conversations and listen and that was so like, it was deeply educational and it built some really solid working relationships for me when I was in office then. Mm-hmm. Any other thoughts, sir? I, so, I love having. Go ahead, Jeanette. Sorry, I love having those coffee chats, right? Um, just you know, meeting someone. Let's get grab a cup of coffee and just having the conversation. Um, what I start doing before I actually ran um, is meeting with those leaders. Um, you know, the first African American man that ran here, one for Reynoldsburg, um, I sat down with him and understanding what some of the things that he um, had to go through and, and experience and, and how I can, you know, move the needle. So really sitting down with those particular leaders in your communities, understanding where you are and where you're trying to be. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I'll just add that, um, you know, opinion leaders might vary depending on issues sometimes. I mean, for example, if I'm trying to work on housing affordability and availability, you know, I'm going to perhaps different groups than if I have a concern with maybe a, a sewer issue in the northern part of our county. So I think it, it you know, um, is a good thing to know that you have to kind of analyze sometimes what's what's my challenge and who can be helpful or harmful and talk to them both and, and get that input. Mm-hmm. So so let's talk a little bit about how you're communicating with your community right now. It's it's extra challenge. It can be challenging and, and then there's some 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 interesting ways to do that. So how in your constituents, how would you communicate uh, what what modes are you using to to try to get the information out? That is because that is a this past year obviously was really hard with with COVID. Um, we um, in the township there were only three there's four of us and so we still met in person and then like zoomed and did all of that. But it does you know come that people are busy and they they really are not still coming to public meetings. You know we're back in person and I can say at the township level and at the village level like. We just don't have people who come to meetings. And sometimes, um, you know, I think we expect people to read our minutes or tune in um, and they're not going to. Um, And so a lot of it is getting on, you know, you know, social media and the things like that. But um, also for us, it's been making sure that we're visiting other key partners. Um, I think, you know, like Chris just said, like it is so much of like. If we're talking about a school issue, going to school board meetings, I feel like people tune into school board more than anything else. And so if we need to get something out there, we go speak at public comment at school board meetings and there are more people there and watch that than anywhere else. And so that is one thing that we've recently found. But it, I, I'd be interested to hear what other people are saying, because this past year was definitely hard. And then when um, things come up for final votes or um, things come out, then people seem very surprised um, and want to know, well, we didn't hear about it. How did this happen? And you're like, oh, my gosh, we're trying here. Um, so yeah, I'm interested what other people are saying because I think this is a hard time. Um, Anybody else on the information? Go ahead, Jeanette. Yeah, I know Reynoldsburg um, last year, we started the Reynoldsburg Connect. 
Um, so we would all, you know, put something in this Reynoldsburg Connect. It's like a newsletter, pretty much. And getting individuals um, to sign up so they would know exactly it goes out once a month. They know what's going on. And also the mayor is doing what we call the Joe Show every Wednesday at 12 noon. He gives updates, right, on what's going on. Um, you know, if there's any comments, that's another place where people be able to do. Um, and again, we do the Zoom. We still, you know, even if we're in person, we're still uh, broadcasting over Facebook. So people can tune in that way. And one of the things that I do, I also send out newsletters. And once a month, I go to my, um, called Civic Park, the park in my ward, and we clean up. And that gives everyone a chance to come out, talk to me, and ask questions. Um, that's another way to co uh, connect with your neighbors, too. Absolutely. Joe Bagany is unbelievable. And he's got so much trust because yes. he's, he throws himself out there. I think it's on Facebook Live. Am I right? It's, it that. is. And he's willing to take questions live. Mm -hmm. And and he also takes what if they, someone doesn't like something and he explains why we have to go in that direction or why they made that decision. It's the, his his trust factor's really risen. Absolutely. So I, I'm getting ready for the fun one I've been waiting to ask you about now. So all of you have great experience. You're doing marvelous things right now. I love your career paths, all the things that led you to where you are right now. Your value is so hot. What would you say to your younger self if she could have known what you know now? You're way more naive back then when you're going for these positions and things you thought you could make a difference and change. You didn't didn't know that we're going to people that might not like you along the journey. What would you say to that younger version of yourself today? I'll start by just saying, you know, I think I would tell myself to um, be comfortable with who I am. Um, you know, I'm, I'm probably one of the older ones on this panel. I grew up in a time when women weren't necessarily leaders in many settings. And I think sometimes we tend to, at least when we're younger, compare ourselves with others. And if we feel a little bit different, it makes us feel uncomfortable. So, you know, I would say to myself, trust your instincts, be comfortable with yourself. You know, I'm a believer in God, the creator, you know, know that God gave you unique gifts and um, just take those gifts and run with them and do what, you know, use what you were given to fulfill the roles intended for you. That's wonderful. Debbie? Um, two things. I would definitely say wear comfortable shoes. I got wicked plantar <laughs> fasciitis from like eight years of heels on marble floors. It took a couple years to get over that. So like figure out a way to be in those spaces without wrecking your body. Um, and um, I would also say to pay attention to power dynamics. Like when you are reaching into a space that feels like a stretch for you and like you're dealing with some feelings of imposter syndrome and trying to hold your own in that space. We have to also be mindful of the way things work and how we affect other folks. So as we want to encourage more participation, as soon as you step into that space and you step up and say you're running for office, people will look at you differently than they did before. So like being mindful of your impact in a conversation and in a space to kind of keep um, room for more folks to participate and more voices to be heard. That was shocking to me at times when I felt that I was still struggling to find my own feet, that other people were intimidated by me. And I had to be mindful about that from day one. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Eileen, this is such a hard <laughs> question. Um, what came to mind is you belong here. Mm -hmm. You belong here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as women, you know, we doubt ourselves. And, you know, again, coming from an IT world, sometimes I was the only one, right? Um, but you belong here. Ne never forget that. Mm -hmm. And um, if I could tell myself that, that would be, when I was younger, that would be the number one thing. Mm -hmm. I have three nieces who are 21, 22, and 23 right now. And so they're going through some of these awkward phases and I have been reflecting a lot and just telling them that your 20s are really hard. Um, you don't really know 
where you're going and you feel stressed out all the time, like you want to see the ending and you can't get there. But, you know, my undergrad, like I said, was in zoology and my graduate degree is in epidemiology. And now I'm a farmer and township trustee. And so I think the big thing was like also understanding that there's not like a ladder that you have to climb, but, you know, that um, that whole jungle gym, um, you know, saying now that it's not a ladder that you have to climb, but how do you reach for one one um you know, reach a long way off course and then reach back. And how can you kind of navigate your life and not be thinking it has to be in one linear motion, um, but use all of your experiences to get a foothold onto the next um, the next step that you're taking. And I think too, you know, Deb, Debbie said it too, like um, you, once you say that you're running for office and stuff, you kind of, people look at you a little bit different. And I think it, I spent many years trying to not trying to be just like oh one of the people and a friend of everybody's and having to know that one day people are going to just kind of start looking at you like um like oh she is really into politics and that does kind of turn some people off but just being proud of it and brave of it and uh and and finding your way to kind of just know what you're meant to do and kind of go for it a little bit mm -hmm. great so um any any kind of final thoughts that you want to share with our audience and we want to end with the idea that they are all capable of helping nurture future leaders everyone that's listening today can help us with those efforts you can think of people you can you might you yourself might be one of those people who who can make a big impact and, and there's all kinds of ways in our community we can do that in different ways so just thinking any last thoughts for our audience because they, they could have the potential leaders in mind or it could be them uh, the actual people so right now our we have a school board election coming up in our community and there are no there's really nobody running um and so there's a bunch of us who are sitting around trying to think of these leaders and texting everybody and having coffee with everybody and like begging everybody you know that we know that are great leaders out there and asking them like please run like you'd be amazing um, you know, we want to see you run. We know you can do it. And watching almost every person say no because they're afraid of the current political climate, especially in education right now and the attacks, um, you know, within that. And and how do we have this conversation of saying, you know, we're there with you. And when somebody attacks you, we're going to stand up mm -hmm. and, and speak up for you. Um, and, you know, even for me, the bravery came um, from knowing that people on both sides of the aisle are willing to stand up and say, hey, that's not okay to attack them that way. Um, and I think we have to say that, that if we want leaders to stand up, um, we need to be there um, to help uh, create a better atmosphere in the way that we speak to each other, in the way that we act um, online when we don't think anybody's looking, um, but everybody in the community. But it's been really disheartening this week um, to watch so many incredible leaders that I have been asking to run say, I'm not willing to get into that climate right now. And this is a tiny, tiny village and school district. And to know that that is scaring them, um, I think speaks to also how we are treating each other and makes me think about, you know, the way that I'm interacting with people um, and how can we create a better um, environment and, and speak up and not just let this extreme fighting, um, you know, on, on, on all sides kind of get in the way of great leadership. Well, you know, Bryn, what I admired about you too, you you went where there where nobody's gone. You went to the Ohio Township Association with a brand new baby, and you weren't yeah. afraid when that baby needed to be taken care of. You just whoop, put the blanket over and, and sat in the meetings and <laughs> didn't miss a beat. So you're you're forging new on uh, a new path. You're you're, yes. you're, you're being and nobody family. ended up. Nobody came and screamed at me and told me to put it away when I was nursing my baby. <laughs> you know, I think that we also. Um, have gotten into like where we only see the worst of people on social media and on the news and we expect that of people and so but when you really get out there you know people aren't really going to come and scream at you and tell you to do that so well, that was or even having the guts to say could we have the meeting at four o'clock as opposed to six or mm -hmm. can we have the meeting at you know um it, it's kind of looking out for yourself and the commitment you made and the balance that you're doing and uh, not to not to be afraid to protect yourself also mm -hmm. Yeah, and Eileen, if I could follow up on what Bryn said, I thought it was so important being there to support others in the community who are doing the right thing, whether it's our school board, you know, helping with school levies, whether it's uh, the Chamber of Commerce on a diversity and inclusion training, participating with them, you know, all of those things. You know, I think most of us, um, 
were raised to do the right thing. And so being willing to continue to do that and to help others do it and having their backs if if you know they, they are personally attacked and, and supporting them and 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 helping demonstrate that that's not the, the right way to get things done is, is really important. And can we just do a quick tips uh, for that the, the spouse or partner? That's that's not the elected person. That's not the CEO of a, of, a, of the nonprofit, but it's your your partner uh, and protecting them. Uh, how, how you know how what, what what advice do you have for for folks that maybe it's uh, they're worried about the partner? What's going to happen to my partner mm -hmm. if I go on this take this big leadership role? You know, I think um, for those of us who decide to run for office, we develop a little bit of a thick skin, right? And we anticipate those attacks. It's harder for our families to watch it. I got to the point where there were things that would like pieces of attack mail that came out that I thought were really creative and funny, you know, um, but I tried to make sure my kids didn't see it because it, it just was painful. Yeah, and for me, um, you know, it's always been incredibly important to make sure I'm there for the really important things in my husband's life, our two children's lives. I remember I had one, and this was actually a work conflict versus a political conflict, where it was my daughter's eighth grade graduation and she was the valedictorian and I was supposed to be in New York City giving testimony on something. And I told the company CEO and they made arrangements to let me come back for it. And so I think, you know, at the end of the day, if we're blessed to have good families, that who is gonna be with us versus a political office or a leadership role and to, to be there for the really important family things mm -hmm. is is just very important. I'm in the yeah. family uh, business and with my sibling and my parents and my in-law, we're in a family business. And so I've said over and over that, like I never want my political work to somehow um, interfere with my family business. That's my brother's livelihood. It's not fair, but I'm like very much the face of our family farm. And, uh, and so that's always been a balance that I've struck is also making sure that, you know, I think through a little bit of like what I'm doing and how can that affect my family farm. But at the same time, they man, do they stand up with me? And last year there was like, you know, the silly political rumors and some people being really mean. And it was amazing to watch my dad and brother immediately, you know, stand up for me and at the farm market telling, you know, somebody like, we don't even want you here. And just like, it was, it was so empowering me for me to see that my family is behind me and in my corner. And I think that that's the strength that we all need is knowing that we have these people who love us unconditionally and who are gonna who are gonna fight with us a little bit. Yeah, Eileen, um, as I think I started out earlier saying that my husband really was my rock to help me get through this. Um, you know, at times when I'm overwhelmed with work and city council, he would say, Shanette, take a break. Let's go out, just go, let's take a walk. Let's go ride our bikes. Um, so he is very grounded for me because I am that one that gets wrapped up with everything. Um, so he helps me. But as you stated before, you know, having family there um, in the beginning and the end is so crucial throughout this entire process. Right. Well, good. Well, my gosh, uh, we're going to be coming to the end here. I don't want to uh, tie people up too much longer, but you know, we just really, really appreciate all the thoughts and the wisdom and the work you're doing right now. Any final uh, message to our audience about the cultivating your next leader, wherever that is, if it's a township, a village, a city, some of the commissions, some of our leadership roles, many, many of our task forces are extremely critical. They're doing the behind the scenes on what we're gonna make a decision on. So any any other thoughts on that? I was Go ahead, Jeanette. Yeah, I will say if I'm always available, right? We can schedule some time for those that's listening in. You're interested in running for a city council, getting into politics. Um, just get in contact with me, and we can. I can put my information out here in the chat box. But just know that um, you are enough. You can do this. Um, it just takes some ordinary people to do some extraordinary things. And I believe, um, you know, once you find that confidence, you can do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I would just say, you know, if, if you're in a leadership role, 
make sure you save some time to connect with those who are maybe where you were 30 years before. Um, just today, being part of this reminded me I owe a response to a, a student who we're talking about getting together for lunch and mm -hmm. you know make time for those kind of things because you never know how you know a, a short lunch like that could maybe help him in the future so save time to invest in those building future leader opportunities absolutely well, gosh, I want to thank everybody. I want to bring us to a close here so that everyone has that extra minute before they start their uh, their noon noon program. But thank you so much. We're going to stay connected to to all of you. We're going to watch what happens. We admire all the work you're doing. We admire that you bring uh, all these different views to the table. You're you exercise good listening tactics. And uh, your your work is incredible. So thank you so much for joining the Morpsey family today. Thank you, audience, for being here. We're going to uh, go ahead and adjourn. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you.